so 420 is crap and 444 is professional grade, right? Well, that's what I used to think too, but sadly I was mistaken. Actually, it's not sad, it's a good thing. 420, 422, and 444 are all professional grade, but which one you want will depend on what you want to do with the footage. So basically what this sequence is describing is a block of 8 pixels, two rows of 4 pixels each. Now, in order to render color, every pixel is rendering a luminance and a chrominance, i.e. the brightness and darkness, and the shade or tint of color. Interestingly enough, the human eye can distinguish luminance, or brightness, contrast better than it can chrominance or color. Take a look at this. Which box can you distinguish more difference in? Interestingly enough, they are both equally different. The box on the left is comprised of five rectangles of green that change only chrominance 10 numerics. The box on the right is comprised of five rectangles of green that change only luminance by 10 numerics. Because of this, when a camera renders pixel colors, it will give every single pixel its own unique luminance. This is what the four represents in our sequence, and you will always have the sequence start with four, saying that there are four unique luminance in every single row of pixels. The other two digits describe the chrominance of our eight pixel block. So as you've probably figured out by now, 444 says there are four unique luminance, and then each row of four has four unique chrominance as well. And you would be correct. This means that every single pixel will have the most color information it can possibly have. Every single pixel will have a unique luminance and chrominance, but it comes at a great cost. Yes, as you can imagine, the file sizes are enormous. It will eat up your hard drives like crazy and will require a lot of processing power out of your computer, not to mention adding significant time to your edit. So because the human eye can have trouble distinguishing between different chrominance of colors, and in an effort to save on file sizes and renderings and processings, camera manufacturers came up with something very clever. They figured out a system in which pixels could actually share chrominance values while retaining their own unique luminance values. Let me show you how it works. So 422 says that while every pixel gets its own brightness, two of the pixels in the top row share color information like this, and two pixels in the bottom row share color information like this. This reduces the file size and processing requirements drastically. And as you probably figured out, that means that 420 means that the two pixels in the top row share color information, but the pixels in the bottom row also share the same color information. Compared to 444, these files can be as little as a third to a quarter of the size. Now while these extreme color rendering examples look frightening, remember that luminance for every pixel is unique. So when we add that information, we get something like this. If we look at the final render of each of these, they aren't vastly different. In fact, the top row of pixels are rendered very similarly, and the second pixel on the bottom row is the only major standout. So you can see how sharing color information across pixels alters the image only slightly, but can go to great lengths in reducing the file size. So what are the situations in which 422 or 444 would actually be very helpful to have? Well, take green screening for instance. Let's zoom way in to a pixel level of a green screen shot. Here you have the screen, and here you might have the top of the shoulder of your actor. When keying out the green, though you will have some control over the luminance in your key, chrominance will be the predominant factor. While 444 should be able to eliminate only green pixels, 422 might struggle on the top right pixel, and 420 will probably remove all 8 pixels. This key would cut into the shoulder of your actor, and is where you see ugly, blocky edges on many green screen shots. When sharing color information, you create problems when you try to play with the pixels based off of those colors. Intense color grading can also play a factor here. If you're adjusting certain hues to create a cool color grade, then you may end up adjusting some pixels you don't intend to because they happen to be sharing color information with other pixels that you are intending to adjust. This can create some ugly looks in color, blotchy colors, things like that. So which one do you want? Well, as you can tell, 420 in most cases will do exactly what you need it to do. Remember, in our example, we were zooming into literally four pixels wide. That's a very small part of your image. 
and those chroma sharing components will be a non-factor if you're not doing green screening and you're not doing super intense color grading. If, however, you do lots of green screening or you constantly get your white balance wrong on set or you just want to do a lot of major changes in your color grading, then 422 or even 444 may be much more important for you. It all depends on how much control you need to have over every pixel and how much you can afford to pay in terms of file size, file storage, computer processing, things like that. So now that you know what chromatic subsampling is and hopefully a better idea of which one is important for your personal workflow, which camera features should you consider absolutely essential to run a highly profitable video production business? Well, I'll answer that question in the next video, so be sure to check it out if you want absolute confidence in purchasing the most important piece of gear in your company. If you enjoyed the animations in this video, then check out the affiliate link in the description to start your free trial. Thank you.